the people who are opposed on either side will continue the fight forever. And look, polling showing too, by the way, I just saw a few poll today. It used to be 54% of the people support gay marriage. Now it's like 49%. And one of the things they talked about in the poll was most people were told this is about two people who love each other. That's it. Now, though, it's trickled into other things like religious liberty, First Amendment rights. So, uh, yeah, but Hogan, don't you rights. think that is a, that, con a convoluted argument to say it is denying people religious liberty to let other people enter into marriage? Let me tell you something, Alex. If you're going to tell me you can force a, 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 a of, of people who take wedding pictures to take pictures of a gay wedding, you can force them by law. Then why can't I force an African American bakery to bake a cake for a white supremacist group or a Jewish group to handle meat in unkosher manner for, for, for another function? It just doesn't work that way. The if you want special carve outs for, for bigotry, we can have that discussion. But I feel like Josh, here, yeah. let, let, I mean, I'll let you get in. I mean, if, uh, Hogan, if this is the advice you're giving your clients, you're, you're doing them a disservice. The difference between this issue in abortion is there is no generational divide on abortion. Young people and old people have roughly the same views and, and public opinion on it, it has been static for decades. On gay marriage, there's this enormous life, generational divide, including a majority of young Republicans in favor of gay marriage. The people on your side of this issue literally are dying every day. Um, and so that's why it's not going to be like Roe v. Wade. It's not going to be something that we're discussing 40 years from now because it's not going to be something where there's a viable political coalition on the anti-side to an election. Right, I mean